Reporting report on Mejia. Yeah, so, um, so we acquired Mejia today off of waivers. Um, uh, Adabilto, it's a fun name to say. Mejia has been a starter most of his career. Good hands. First time in the bullpen. Um, been effective against lefties. He's struggled early in the year. He pitched well for Anaheim um, in his last stop. Actually pitched really well for them uh, his last outing through three shutout innings, struck out four. He was in their 16 inning game. He's out of options and they needed bullpen reinforcements, so they put him on waivers. Um, and so we picked him up to add, uh, add some left handed depth to the, to the bullpen. Um, he's on, we had to put Jed on the 60 day to get uh, Mejia onto our uh, 40 man roster. And once Mejia reports, we'll put him on the 25. He's currently, he was DFA'd, I think, five days ago. So he's currently in the Dominican. So we got to get him on three planes tomorrow to get him here. And if, he, if everything goes according to plan, he'll be activated tomorrow. But if there's any delays, it might not be until Thursday. And, and uh, what about, what kind of stuff does he have? What is it that, uh, that he throws at you guys like? He's, uh, he's got a pretty, pretty big arm. As, as a bullpen guy, he's been touching 95 fairly consistently. He's got a, uh, he's got a slider, a curveball, and a changeup. Um, we think he can simplify that a little bit out of the bullpen, focus more on the, on the curveball perhaps. Um, and, uh, you know, it's an opportunity to, again, just add depth to the left-hand side of the bullpen um, for now as we continue to see if we can do something else. And what's uh, Jed's status? Because he thought he would be on uh, rehab uh, assignment already. He wanted to yeah, we had we at one point we had him scheduled to go out yesterday or go out to start today. We pushed it back to tomorrow so the staff could work with him one more day before he goes out. But our intent is to have him go out tomorrow, and the 60-day transaction really doesn't change his timing at all. Um, he, I think I believe it's like adds eight more days until we can until we can activate him, and, and he's going to be on rehab longer than that anyway. So it's really a paperwork move that. Uh, you know, kicks the can down the road a few days before we have to make a 40-man decision. Is there a, a thought that you might trade him between now and then, be, given that you have some depth or some bench options here that you seem to like? Or I mean, we're not. Part? I'm not going to talk about like trading individual players. I mean, we're we're sp we spent a normal amount of time on the phone and texting the last few days trying to trying to make trades, to make the team better. But I'm not going to get into specifics about any individual player. On the two lefties you signed here, Roska and Mejia. Right. Is that at all? An indication of what asking prices might be like for lefties on 25-man rosters, or are those unrelated? I think I think it's not so much about what the asking price is. It's just the uncertainty whether we're going to be able to make a move. And we know these are two moves that we know we can make now. Um, they don't in any way affect whether we make a move in the next 24 hours. I mean, if we if we can make a move to to, to land someone that we're excited about, we will. Uh, regardless of what we've done, you know, with these with with these two players. But at the same time, we didn't want to. We didn't want to pass up on these opportunities and then get to, get to the trade deadline and have, have done nothing. So it's just a way to add some depth from the left side. What do you guys like about Ross Cup? Um, again, he's, he's been a very effective pitcher in the, in, when he's been in the minor leagues this year. He's been DFA'd and outrighted and a few times. Um, he, he's got swing and miss stuff. He, he's, like a lot of these guys, his challenge is throwing strikes. And so, um, you know, it's an opportunity to send him to Memphis and, and see if we can help him out at all. See if we can get him throwing strikes, and uh, and he can you know pitch his pitch his way onto the big league roster at some point. Is there something that you guys saw? I mean, he does have a lot of walks. He's got the strikeouts, but the walks have kind of been the, the issue. Is there something you guys targeted and said we think we can fix that? Or uh, I, yeah, I and mean, there's I don't want to pretend that there's like some special we have some special plan for the guy. Uh, you know, sometimes it's just a different message, a different voice, a different approach. Um, you know, we're hopeful that he can translate the command he shows in the minor leagues to the big leagues when the time comes. Um, but again, these are depth, depth, depth opportunities. There's, there's, you know, they're guys that we think can help down the road, but they're not game changers at the moment. Your we're, two major leaguers that are in uh, the minor leagues right now, how, how would you characterize that? With Carpenter, does he have to hit before you bring him back up? And with Ozuna, does it matter he's going to be up here Friday or Saturday? Um, so Carp's going to stay in uh, on a rehab for a while longer. Uh, he's he's trying to work on his stuff. He's trying to find his swing. Yeah, he he wants to get figured out before he comes up here too. And so he will transition to Memphis. Uh, I believe it's after tonight's game. Springfield has an off day, so he'll then transition to Memphis for the weekend. And uh, you know, he's at the point where it's it, you know if things click at some point, he could be up here quickly. And uh, you know, but it, there's no definitive timetable. Um, Ozuna will start. I mean, he's going to get. Probably three at bats today and play five innings, sort of like you know the first time you go out at the start of spring training. Um, things go well, he'll do that again. Things go well, he'll progress from there. 
Um, I don't think, I don't know what date you just said, but I don't know that we should like think it's going to be in three or four days, but it's, it's hopefully going to be quickly. But again, it depends on how his hand feels and, and how he looks when he gets out there. What, what can you say without showing your hand about your pursuit for an upgrade in terms of uh, before the trade deadline? I mean, are you, are you optimistic? Are you, is it a tough market? What, what can you tell fans about that? Um, I, I would say uh, over the course of today, I've been optimistic at times that we uh, are making progress, and then, and then sometimes the next phone call or the next message is, is, is less optimistic. Um, I think I'm, I'm somewhat optimistic that, that the market hasn't like, opened up yet. Like they're, they're, the industry hasn't found the right sales price for, for all the stuff that, that's, that's out there. Um, so I'm hopeful that at some point we can find that right price and make the moves that we're trying to make. Um, but but it's 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 hard to be optimistic at every moment of the day because it, it varies by every conversation. Gersh, did the, the the deal that was made with Stroman does that happen in a vacuum or does that set the market price for a starting pitcher? Um, <laughs> I think it depends which side you ask, right? It depends who like who thinks the deal helps them, right? If you're a, if, if you're a buyer who thinks that he went too low, then you say, oh, there's a new market price. And if you're a seller who thinks he went too low, then you say, ah, don't worry about it, right? So um, I think the, 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 the truth is that we're, almost all these situations are basically auctions between teams. It, it, there's not so much a sales price as there is who bids the most. And, and when push comes to shove, if teams want to make moves, that's, that's who they're going to go to, whoever bids the most. So. bids are like an auction of dollars, and everybody has the same currency. Prospects that's, are way different currency. That's part of the challenge. Finding out who likes your players and which players they value and how they value them. And, yeah. Have you changed the market for starting pitchers, having a guy eliminated from it that maybe most folks I don't think thought the Mets were going to be in, that, in the pursuit of that kind of move? Again, I don't think it dramatically. I mean, it's hard to tell because the market still hasn't moved, right? So it's it's hard to say. But I don't think I don't think that like dramatically changed things from the conversations we've had. How, how much of the words when you look at the idea of you got prospects that they have value and cost control, and then you've got big leaguers with value for fewer years and the whole thing, and it's always matching up to find the best matchup. But then there's the idea of making the playoffs and the value of that. Can you just put in the words the idea of three or four years of missing the playoffs and being having a chance to win the playoffs? Does that maybe give you more of a push in regards to those deals? Yeah, I think I think what what we're trying to do, what every contender is trying to do, is is weigh the value of wins in 2019 versus wins in 2021, two and three, right? And and that equation varies for a lot of reasons. Like, look, we're in a good spot in that we are fighting for a division not just for a wild card, right? That puts us in a different spot than, than some other teams who are in, in this market. So, um, but there's no, there's no magic formula. Like there's no like, you know, X times two makes the, you know, it, it, it's somewhat feel, but our, our mission is to be, is to feel, is to feel the playoff caliber team every year. And, and that means you can't, you can't give away 2021, 20, 22 and 23 blindly in pursuit of 2019. There has to be, there has to be a rational, a rational approach to this. and. Uh, that's what we're trying to do. Like we, we want to help this team. We we want to make a move, but we're not. We we, we, we can't force it to happen. Jump back, jump back to Carlo real quick. He said through the weekend he'll be in Memphis. So that takes the, the intent is for him to go to Memphis for their series that starts on. I'm missing up my days. Thursday, I believe. Yeah. And how long he stays is still somewhat to be determined. But so that's a weekend be, series. So it probably would be not Oakland, LA is still maybe a discussion, but not. Something like that. Look, if he hits, if he hits tonight, and he hits, you know, when he gets to Memphis, then we'll revisit. Like we're at the point where we revisit whenever, whenever he feels right and he looks right, and the results start to come. So how, how, was the, the, how does the DH play? I mean, you have access to the DH. If you want an extra hitter, it might be a chance. Yeah, I, I think that is a consideration, but like the the main one is getting Carp going, and so like like we talk about other stuff. That is a factor, but it's not going to force us to make something that we don't think is the right decision. How difficult, how difficult would it be at 3.01 on Wednesday if you retain your prospects, but the two teams you're neck and neck with each require a quality starting pitcher? Um, so I'm not really concerned about what they do. I, I, I would be disappointed if we weren't able to find something to help this team by 3 o'clock, but, um, but 
we're, again, we're not going to force it just to just to make something happen. What was the message to Harrison going down? What do you want to see from him short term and then moving forward given some of his struggles recently? Yeah, I think the message was that he, he he's – he, he needs to play. He needs at-bats. He needs regular at-bats, which he wasn't getting up here. And he knows that he's out of whack and needs to get regular at-bats. Um, but he is a tremendous defensive player and a tremendous base runner. And we fully expect him to be a big part of what we do going forward. He just needs to go out and get some at-bats. Was this a tough call because what he brings defensively? Was it a tough call or was he so out of whack? That... Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, like, yeah, it's a tough it's a tough decision because he had he adds value. He's a guy who without hitting can add value. And you could say he he didn't start very many games after the All-Star break, but he was in he was in the late innings almost every game and he adds real value despite despite having his uh, you know, not being rolling offensively. So yeah, it was a tough decision, but um, ultimately we felt like he was more value to us if he could go out and get, you know, some at bats, get some consistent playing time and get a swing going. You won't spend Leo, much time on, uh, or any time, really, uh, looking at 2019 free agents, or are you fixated on someone with over control beyond this season? We're open to all sorts of things. What kind of clarity did the reevaluation on Yachty's hands provide? Uh, so he saw the doctors yesterday. Um, they did some imaging. They were they were happy with the way things are progressing. Um, he's probably going to start doing baseball activities here. Hopefully not why I say this, but sometime soon. Maybe he is already playing first base, but he's throwing left-handed. Um, within By the end of the week, he'll be taking swings is the, is the plan if everything goes well. And then from there, he's, we start figuring out the timing on a rehab assignment and, and you know, just sort of march through all the process to get him back here. But it was a very, a very positive, optimistic report from the doctors. There's been some optimism with starting pitching this year, notably Hudson overall. Um, but going forward, is there some concern about uh, the stamina of who you currently have as starting pitchers? Um, there's always some concern, but I, I don't think there's anybody that we have. We're not. We're not we don't have anybody out there who's going to like blow through their career high by 30 or 40 innings. I don't think this year, right? So we're. It's always a. Uh, it's always a mild concern, right? Same thing with the bullpen. There's always a concern about overworking guys, um, and, and that's why adding depth's a positive, but that's not, again, not something that we're a driving force or, a, you know, we're looking to skip guys or anything like that. To that point, with the bullpen, Gallegos, Kant, Rebia are all guys that are sort of racking up innings here, kind of a career high in pace. Is there, does that color what you're pursuing at all here in the next couple, 24 hours? Again, we've got a lot of guys down there who've been worked hard lately, especially. Um, if we can if we can add quality depth out there, that would be that'd be great. And we tried to make our first move with Mejia to, to, to add some depth, and, and we'll kind of keep looking at all the opportunities we have. And what's the uh, latest on Austin Gomber? So Austin is he's he's had a long, slow recovery. Um, he basically got shut down and is starting now back up from from scratch. So he's back starting the throwing program after having taken another break. Um, I'm not exactly sure where in the throwing program he is, but he's you know, in the first week or so of it. Um, and so far, this is he's feeling better this time. Things are going better, and, uh, and we'll sort of see how, where it goes from there. I don't think we're quite to that point yet. Um, I think if this goes well, then, then there's a chance he's pitching competitively you know, in a few weeks or whatever. Um, I, I, realistically, he's probably not going to be ready to go 100 pitches before 2020, but, but he, could be, he could be back if, if this all goes well. Um, yeah, I think Alex is a little farther ahead than, than Gomber in terms of having thrown a little bit more. Um, he is rehabbing and hopefully, you know, he's making progress on a throwing program and, you know, we just keep reassessing every few days and see where he's at. But he would be for the pan, I assume, if he's I to think, make it back here. I think, yeah, I th never say never, but I think at this point he's, he's he, stretching him out to 100 pitches is probably fairly unlikely. Do you have a, a date in mind for him seeing it? I, not right now. We don't have a date set. With the, with the moves you made to the bullpen, are the conversations you're having more rotation and bullpen or just pitching in general across the board ways to improve it? It's everything. Anything we can do to help the team. I mean, like, we're looking for opportunities, especially when, when it's hard to find things that work. You're working for any of them, you know, whether it's any, any facet of the game that we can help and make a move that, that improves us, we're, 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 uh, we're looking for it. So when you're calling a team out, Team X, you float an idea at them. Do they basically say, okay, well, we'll think about it. We got to hear from other teams, or are they countering? Is it where basically the, the sellers are basically just receiving and considering, or how much give and take is taking place just in general? 
it, it varies by situation, but in general, uh, a, a team, it's easier for a team who's, who's uh, acquiring prospects, who's sell, a seller, mm -hmm. it's easier for them to tell you who they like than for you to guess who they like, right? So it's hard to like, like here's three prospects, and they're like, ah, we don't like any of those guys. Right? Okay, here's three other, like, it, it, it's a more productive process when the selling team tells you what, you know, what they're looking for. Here are guys we like, and you say, eh, no, 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 maybe, or whatever. Um, how we, the iterations, the timing, how it all plays out, it just varies by team and by situation. Do you have a pretty good idea or a good sense of what the other teams like that you guys have though? Yeah, we have a pretty good idea of the, the players whose names keep coming up and, and, and what those guys might look like and where they would fit in. Yeah. And comfortable enough that they would would be on the table now. Well, I mean, the problem is right right now we're not comfortable with any of them. Otherwise, we'd have a move done, right? So, um, but we, you know, as we keep talking, the the discussion varies from the players we start talking about to other players. So. Hey, Chris, real quick, uh, Randy or Rose or Anya, can you describe what you've seen in his progress in recent weeks and months? Yeah, he's he's been fantastic. He started the year on the DL after having a good spring and has not stopped hitting since we activated him. Um, Really, he's a little bit of a victim of just circumstance at the moment. Give, given the trade deadline and, the, and needing to put him on the 40-man roster and Ozuna starting a rehab, it's just not the right time to, to make a move for a guy like that. Um, plus, Lane's been hitting really well as well. But, but Randy's played great, uh, played well offensively. He's, he's moved around the outfield, played all three positions, and, uh, yeah, we're excited about him.